Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. What you're about to watch is our review of the new Bajaj Cute, which has captured the imagination of South Africans everywhere. But stay tuned to the channel and subscribe so that you don't miss our Bajaj Drag Race. Yes, we raced the Bajaj against something. Well, let me keep that a secret for now. Okay, so this is a weird day. Um, driving a cute on the race track. <laughs> How does it sound like there's a window open? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the inside of the new Bajaj Cute. And before I start this review, remember the Cars.co has the largest selection of used cars online right now, anywhere in South Africa. Go find your next car. Okay. Here we go, the review you've all been waiting for, the social media star of our generation, the Bajaj Cute. Flat out, 50, grab forth, 52, 55, let's go on a top speed run, 60, grab fifth, hit the rev limiter, 65, we're getting to the top speed now of 70. That's it, and we're up against the limiter. There it is. Won't let you go further. So, the Bajaj has a top speed of 70 kilometers an hour, and funnily enough, when you get to 70, it feels like the engine's got more to give, but it, there's, a, there's a limiter there, right? So you can't go past 70. And, and that's a good thing, yeah, yeah. So zero to 100, not applicable. Okay, and also don't corner too fast. So what is this thing? Well, technically it's not a car, even though it has four wheels and a steering wheel. It's licensed in South Africa as a motorbike, well, more, more accurately, a quadricycle. And it is highway legal because the highway code in South Africa only speaks about displacement of engine, the engine size, and this, this car qualifies, or this thing qualifies. But with a max speed of 70 k's an hour, with cars around you doing 120, that's not a good idea. Don't go on the highway in this thing. You're just a hazard. You're a hazard to everyone else. You're a hazard to yourself. So what are we dealing with here? Well, it's a rear-engined, rear-wheel drive quadricycle. There's a little motorbike engine in the back. It's 216 cc's, which means 0.2 liters. Um, yeah, it has one piston. It's a single cylinder, 216 cc. Here come the power figures for you. 8.08 kilowatts. The 08 is very important. And 18.9 newton meters and in my experience from having driven this around cape town for a bit it's actually okay in in stop start traffic and sort of on normal roads where the speed limit is 60. it's actually fine i wasn't expecting it to be but it's fast enough off the line it's fast enough through the gears it gets to 60 k's an hour fast enough you can definitely keep up with traffic in sort of urban situations and that's actually quite a pleasant surprise for me i was a little bit worried about that but keep in mind, as soon as you start adding passengers and luggage to the Bajaj Cute, it, it doesn't cope so well. In fact, I really battled to actually get it to its top speed with four passengers inside. So let me take you through what it's like to drive. Um, not great, if I'm honest. Uh, I think the biggest concern here for me is the rollover risk. It really does feel like it'll topple over very easily very, very easily. And I'm worried if you put more weight on the roof because there's no boots. So if you put all your luggage on the roof, you know, then it's even more top heavy. It's not great in crosswinds at all. And you, you don't want to swerve. You really don't want to, well, okay. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't swerve too hard either. Then you're, wow. Then you're going straight onto your side. In fact, that's my biggest safety concern with this thing. I mean, Obviously, if you're on, say, a motorbike, you're more vulnerable, you're more exposed, just. 
but on a motorbike you can maneuver, you can swerve very quickly to get out of the way of something or if there's an obstacle in the road. That's my concern here. I think this is quite a big rollover risk. You have to be very careful with how you drive it. You can't drive too quickly around corners. So just keep that in mind. Um, there is an aircon of sorts. Uh, well, a fan sort of comes out of here. Uh, the switch for it is down there. Um, you can rotate these so that you can get some air on you. Uh, and it goes out of the windscreen as well. So you can face those onto the windscreen. Uh, so if it's fogged up or whatever, or you can face it onto yourself for a little bit of fresh air. One of the complaints I have is the seat is sort of like sitting on a park bench. There's no lateral support whatsoever. So when you're going around corners, you sort of get thrown around the cabin. You have to really sort of hold on to the steering wheel. <laughs> I thought like it was gonna go over. That was at 30 k's an hour. Oh. Right, let me give you a bumper to bumper tour of the Bajaj Cute. This is the front bumper. <laughs> yeah, this is the boot. Um, now you do need the key to open it, except it's currently locked right now and um, it's quite easy to break in, as you, as you can see. Uh, it's not a huge boot and you do need it because there isn't actually a rear boot, but I wouldn't recommend leaving anything in here because well, I can see that water and dust are getting in. It's not very well sealed. Um, so don't leave anything that isn't waterproof inside there. Coming around to the side, we have these stunning 12 inch wheels. Uh, those are 13570 12 inch. And it has one of my favorite things on this whole car. These <laughs> the wheel nuts. They just literally look like you can get them at Builders Warehouse. There's no way those are automotive grade wheel nuts. They're <laughs> They're just standard nuts. <laughs> Wing mirrors are not electrically adjustable as you might have expected. You need to adjust them yourselves, but that's fine. Here's your door handle. Obviously there's no central locking. You have to open everything with the key. I'll give you a proper tour of the interior in a second, but while I'm walking around, I just wanted to show you the handbrake. That's where it is. So it's a little bit easy to forget, but it becomes quite easy to use after, you know, after a while you're used to it and just sort of up and down with, with your right hand. Let me show you the rear leg room. Now this is a, yeah, the doors don't really, they don't really stay in position. Um, you just have to <laughs> keep them in place. So something that actually has impressed me or maybe surprised me rather is how much space there is in the back. I mean, look how much, space there is for humans you know and you get lots of leg room look at this that's fine you know i wasn't expecting that it's not too bad this is where you put the fuel in little fuel filler door there it's actually a little tricky you kind of have to get the fuel pump nozzle sort of below to get in there it's a little bit of a weird design and uh it takes eight whole liters eight at the current prices, that's 130 bucks. All right, moving around to the back. Now, as I mentioned, there's no boot. You can't open anything here, and that's why they've put a roof rack. So that's where all your luggage goes. But what there is back here is the engine. All 216 cc's of it. There it is. So yeah, it's a little, little rear-engined, rear-wheel drive motorbike, basically. And that's pretty much it. That is the Bazaj Cute on the outside. Let's hop inside and I'll take you on an interior tour. Welcome to the inside of the Cute. In case you forget what you're driving, it says Cute on the steering wheel. Uh, there's no airbags. The Hooter works very well though. <coughs> oh, yeah, wow, that's very loud. Um, you do get a little radio CD MP3 USB aux jack radio thing. There's two speakers underneath the dashboard. Here is your gear lever, five gears up, five gears down, and then you pull this little thing to get into reverse. 
you got a little cigarette lighter thingy here so you can charge your phone if you buy an adapter two cubby holes which annoyingly you need to use the key for so if you know if you need to quickly get something out of there and you've got the key in the ignition you, you can't unlock it you have to switch off of the car. Uh, windows open in both directions, which is quite interesting. You do get a sun visor. However, I don't recommend using it because it's completely in your line of sight. <laughs> so yeah, there's a little interior light up here. Uh, in the doors, there's actually an enormous amount of storage space. I'm really quite surprised by that. That's actually very very practical your spare wheel is down here by the passenger's legs and the jack to jack the car up is also under here so that's quite important you might need to know that there's plastic on the seat so we're not taking it off because this car is actually for sale so we want to leave that on for the dealer so we don't mess up the seats um, and that is about it there's a seat belt for each passenger which is nice. Little little bit of storage here in the middle. No drinks holders though. But what I discovered this morning is you can actually put your coffee here and it actually stays. It doesn't really move too much. Let me quickly take you through the instrument cluster. But right, let me turn it on for you. So it looks like it's come from a motorbike, probably has. On the left here is your fuel indicator, five little bars, and it does have a reserve fuel light. So that's quite important. I quite like that the speedo, where it goes past 70, the numbers are in red, you know, because normally on your rev counter, which it doesn't have, the, the numbers after the red line would be red, but in this, the speed is red. That's the danger zone, don't go there. But anyway, there's a hard limiter at 70, so you can't go much faster than that. Unless you're going down a massive downhill, maybe, perhaps. Um, when you put it into neutral, there's a big green N over here, so you know you are in neutral, that's quite important. Uh, that's your range over there. So on a full tank of eight liters, it says it'll do 186 Ks. Probably get a bit better than that because you know we were driving it we were drag racing it and that sort of thing and then this one in the bottom here is your gear indicator that's quite useful because you don't really know which gear you're in at any one time so that's pretty useful as you go up through the gears but otherwise it's pretty much what you would expect from a little car really i mean it is technically sort of motorbike quadricycle but you do drive it like a car there's three pedals clutch over there brake over there accelerator over there So, since this car has arrived in South Africa, people have been going nuts about it. Social media is just full of memes, it's full of videos of this car, there's that terrible video of it falling over. You know, the, no, I don't think there's a single South African who doesn't know what this car is right now. And when I was driving out to the racetrack today, I mean, people were pulling up alongside me, taking videos, shouting at me, asking me to stop so that they could see the car. It's insane how much interest there is in this car. But, well, this quadricycle. But I, I don't think I can recommend this as a passenger car. I really don't. At, at 75,000 Rand, you, you can buy something decent second hand. And I, I think that's the way to go. I mean, you could go into Cars or Cosa right now, and you can find yourself a, a nice Polo or an old Hyundai i10 or something like that. And sure, a lot of people are scared by car maintenance, but. It's just the reality of owning a vehicle. Vehicles break, they need parts replaced and all the rest of it. I do suspect this will be very, very easy to maintain, but I don't think you're getting enough of a car-like proposition here to make it worth not going out and just buying yourself a proper car for the same price. I think the use case here is fairly limited. It's okay around town. You, you can't really go on highways. I mean, legally you can, but I wouldn't advise it. And perhaps if you turn it into a bit of a panel van, get rid of the back seats, you know, and use this for sort of little deliveries, I don't know, little maybe restaurant deliveries, or if you work for take a lot or something like that, you've got to get parcels around. Then it's not too bad. But, you know, South Africans, we do long distances. We use our highways. We use our freeways. Some of our urban roads have speed limits of 80 kilometers an hour, so you can't even you know, get up to speed on those sorts of roads. I mean, that's all a concern for me. Absolutely no airbags in here, no ABS. I mean, you are your own side impact protection. Your, your shoulder is your, you know, that's your 
side impact. I mean, I, I do actually quite like it for what it is. It, it, it does what it says on the tin, you know? If you're not expecting a car-like experience, if you think about it more like a tuk-tuk or something like that, you know, then it is what it is. It's, it's just a little motorbike with four wheels, really. So you're looking to buy a Bajaj Cute. Well, you'll need to part with 75,000 Rand. That's it. There's no higher or lower spec model to choose from. It comes standard with a two-year 20,000 kilometer warranty, but there's no service plan included and there isn't one available as an optional extra. So you'll have to get the servicing done yourself. You can buy or service your new Cute at one of three dealerships in Johannesburg, one in Pretoria and one in Cape Town, and soon there'll be one in PE and one in Durban. Bajaj is looking to expand their footprint in the country, so if you're a dealer and you're looking to sell Bajajes, get in touch with them. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much for watching. If you've just watched this video, but you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, you absolutely should do that immediately right now. Click the subscribe button. It's a good idea for a bunch of reasons, which I actually don't have really a lot of time to go into, but it's good. It's a good idea. Excellent. Thanks for watching. I said that already. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to.